Hey everybody, I'm Eddie Ray. You're watching my YouTube channel. And in this video, we are at Cage's Bend Campground. I'm not going to do a campground tour. You can watch that right up here. Uh, did one a couple years ago. But I do have a couple of tips and trips and modifications that I've made to our camper to give you kind of a show of some ideas that I have. Otherwise, I will show you our campsite. We are at Campsite 39. I think you'll find it nice and shaded, good and flat, and perfect for a nice water view. Let's take a look. So the items that I wanted to show you is just a little modification that I've made to the camper. Uh, you know, we do things that we like, we do things that we see, and we like to amend and add and change and do whatever we can to make it most proficient for us and our campground efforts. So what I want to show you is here uh, what I've done to the tongue area. As you can see our tongue we have a uh, toolbox, we have a couple of tubes here and a little bit of chain mechanism that we're trying to change up and do some things more efficiently and a little bit better effort. Now if we take a look inside of the toolbox uh, you'll find that I've added a battery, I've added an on-off master switch for the battery, and then I have a couple of automotive jacks, jack stands, and a hydraulic jack. Uh, we keep our lug wrench in the storage compartment, but you'll see if you take a look inside here, there's plenty of space to keep everything you need. Also keep my anti-sway bar inside here as well for storage. Another item worth mentioning is uh, a bicycle lock. Now, we all have bicycles. We store the bicycles or trace, take the bicycles with us. Uh, but we needed a mechanism that we could utilize to lock our bicycles up, especially at night or while we're gone. Uh, so I took the effort and put in a big D loop right here and we lock up our bicycles to it. Simply stack them beside one another, one, two, three, and then run a cable and it locks right in. Just a couple bucks, but it's a little security that we're a peace of mind that we can add to that. Now the next piece of business we're gonna talk about are these tubes right here. So these are for our blackwater hoses. I got tired of sticking them in my bumper, okay? So my back bumper is that square bumper, you slide it in. If you lose an end cap, the thing will blow out and it's dangling going down the highway. Who's pulled over on the side of the interstate and taking a look because their hose is hanging out or they've lost their hose or something weird has happened with the hose. So this is what I've used. It's a four inch piece of large pipe. The hose just barely fits in there. And so you can slide it all the way in as far as the roundness of it or the diameter of it. Uh, you can slide it right in there and store your hose in each of these. Now we have two. We've run into instances where we need two hoses. If we've stayed somewhere where they have full hookups and the hookup is not exactly where we need it, you need two hoses. And I'm kind of one of those safeguard, make sure we got it kind of guys, so two hoses. Um, so they slide right in here. The other side is where they slide into because it's the driver's side. And uh, you can easily pull them out or push them back in. So another issue that I've run into and tried to remedy, and I believe I have, is the, the, the looseness or the, the elasticness of my, my plug meaning my seven point pin plug. Uh, so generally speaking, here it is, and we plug this in the back of our bumper. Well, as you can see here, I've got a little bit of a tape kind of issue. So uh, what it was happening was if I would turn funny or I would turn too sharp, that piece of that cable would get pinched under my receiver. Uh, so then I was having some bare wires. We all know that's not a good thing. So I went through the effort and I made this little contraption, bolted it onto the side of my tongue or side of my trailer and stored it and I've run my electrical cable through it. It keeps it up, it keeps it away and it keeps it where I'm not going to pinch it. So there's plenty of slack in it and I can make whatever turns I need and I'm not pinching my cable. Worked out pretty good. So I ask another one of those questions. Anybody ever lost one of the Carter pins that they stick to your weight distribution hitch or to the tongue of the trailer? Yeah, probably so. Well, with a little bitty effort and a self-tapping screw, I took and got me some chain here. 
and I chain my pin. So when I'm done with it, I simply either drop it or tuck it over the side and I'm not apt to lose it. It's one of those helpful things that you think you might not forget. You'll lay it on the bumper, you'll lay it on your trailer, you'll put it somewhere, and then you lose it. So don't want to lose those type things. Sure enough, going down the end of the highway, you lose a big bump, and there goes your weight distribution, hits y'all out of whack. We don't need that problem. Just keep your pins handy, keep them close, and keep them right there to you. It's easy to do. Okay, another one of those, have you done it questions. You know, obviously I'm asking these, have you done it questions because I'm curious. I know I've done it. Uh, what about when the trailer comes from the dealer or the manufacturer and the, uh, the, the safety pin or the safety cord for the trailer brakes is about a mile long and they've got it wrapped all in all these different little areas to take up that slack and uh, it eventually hits the ground and it rubs in half and it's no longer connected but it's wrapped all in your uh, safety chains. Anybody done that? Yeah, right here. I've done it too. You know, we've camped enough that we've had some fun times running into issues. Well, this was another one. Uh, so what I did I do, I went and got this nice little cable here. Got a clamp on it, one of these little safety clamps. And then I've got my hook and then I simply put it on a place other than my my hitch uh, to secure it in the event that I lose my trailer and so it will pull and uh, you know the reason why I don't put it on where the actual hitch is is because if that were to break uh, I'd lose the hitch and the weight distribution hitch and the safety pin and no actual uh, braking malfunction or braking function would take place it's hooked somewhere other than where it needs to be hooked or where it, I don't want to say where it needs to be other than your actual hitch there's a likelihood that that's not going to do that. You'll actually have a function when the brakes go off or when you lose the trailer. All right, and just another one of those. Uh, I was working, I work with a lady who uh, made mention, she camps, her first camper was a Jayco and uh, very similar to ours. And we were talking about our weight distribution bars. What do you do with them things? I'd like to put some hooks on here to hang it like that. Well, I'd like to set it in the ground. Do you put it in your truck? What do you do with them while you're camping? Uh, well, for a while, we just laid ours on the ground. And I don't like them on the ground for whatever reason. I'm just I have an issue with that. And she says, well, we use our safety chains. I said, what do you mean you use your safety chains? She says, well, we wrap them around the end and then hook them on the, on, the, on the frame. And they're just there. And they hang and they're not on the ground. They don't get punk on them. And they're, real, they're stored. And it's easily. So I took a look at that and I said, hmm. Not a bad idea. So that's what we've done here. I'll give you a shot. As you can see, we have our chain, which loops around our bar. And then down here, hooks to the chain and then the chain back up. So it works out really nice that we have that. And that's pretty thoughtful and helpful and helpful way of doing business. So the site we're in here is campsite number 39. Uh, coming in and take a look at it, it's a well flattened pad. As you can see behind us here, we have a couple of steps and then there's another pad here. Angie's over here working, looks like on the fire. Uh, picnic table, plenty of room for chairs, and then the lake is way down here. There's 30 and 50 amp fuses for electricity of course a water source and then a 110 in case you want to run an extension cord or something of the sort but uh, you can see that this suits us very well also there's plenty of trees the trees are abundant and in the may summer heat the shade is adequate um, we've had about 95 temperatures uh, all week or all weekend and this has been perfecto for what we've been using so as you can see, I've made some changes to the front end of my trailer, the storage end. I've got some safety precautions in place. I've got some septic precautions in place. And I've got some forgetful precautions in place. We use this cover here. All those precautions are taken in consideration that we're going to take care and maintain our equipment, which is probably a number one priority. If you spent this kind of money on a truck and you spent this kind of money on a trailer, you want to take care and maintain your investments. So I hope this has been helpful to you. 
hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you're a first time viewer, thank you for viewing our video. I hope that you'll hit the subscribe or thumbs up button and or thumbs up button and leave a comment and share all those different things just to help us along. We get more subscribers, more viewers, more people to travel along with and enjoy what it is that we do. Always remember when you're with us, don't forget to dream big and live for the moment. Travel along with us. Thanks again.